Solving the problem of dark energy and dark matter by reviewing the basic laws of physics. In 2016, a BBC science documentary entitled The Mystery of Dark Energy was produced for the BBC's Horizon documentary series in which scientists spoke about the issue and its new achievements. It's not the color of dark, it's just an expression of our ignorance as to what is this stuff. The discovery of dark energy uh, really surprised theoretical physicists and remains a deep mystery of nature. We are absolutely still lacking great ideas. So it is crying out for some new breakthrough, new thinking. What Einstein did was he actually came out and looked at the bigger picture and put all these different elements together to come up with the theories that he had. It might be time for the bigger picture to be re-evaluated. There's definitely room for another Einstein to come in and, and, and shake everything up and tell us that we've been looking at things completely wrong up until now. The following video is presented in response to the ambiguities of that documentary. The universe that we live in. Many things that we see. and so many things that we do not see and are unaware. Let's go back to the beginning of existence. When this world of ours was a very very compressed globe with very high temperature in which mass and energy were so interconnected and compressed that no separate mass and energy could be conceived. At first, by special methods, we obtained the initial energy of the Big Bang. Using simple calculations with appropriate approximation, the energy in the moment of Big Bang is 10 to the power of 110 joules to 10 to the power of 120 joules, which is very, very high. Let's go back to the present. The amount of consuming energy from the moment of the Big Bang to the present, which is 14 billion years, must be calculated. First, creation of subphotons. Photons. And then electrons, protons and neutrons. 
atoms and then stars galaxies and structures If calculated, more than 10% of the Big Bang's energy is consumed and it could easily be obtained that about 90% of the Big Bang's energy has remained. From the beginning of the equilibrium or homogeneity of the universe, this remained energy has caused the expansion of the universe, so that the structure of systems and galaxies remains constant. But most of the galaxy, due to their structure, is moving away and their speed will also increase. It should be noted that what drives them away is the initial energy that started from the Big Bang moment and continues to this day and will continue to do so. In fact, dark energy has been around since the beginning of the Big Bang. But after the equilibrium or homogeneity of the universe, we found its effect. And now, the energy applied in the universe is the residual primary energy or the dark energy. For example, when a large dam breaks, many roaring waves flow. Travel several thousand kilometers and in the end, reach a relative calmness near the shore. If the galaxies were not distant from each other, we might never find a dark energy. It could be said that the universe is like a large sphere rotating around itself. The moon around itself and around the Earth the earth around itself and around the sun, the sun around itself and around the Milky Way, and the Milky Way revolves around itself and around the hypothetical center of the universe. You should consider that when the huge explosion, the Big Bang, was first created, each particle of that compact object expands at a very very high velocity in the n directions and because it has very very high velocity and acceleration, if there was not any rotational and spiral motion, these particles would never form the stars and galaxies and the universe that existed was like a very large sphere of dust. And we also have to note that this large sphere is growing from inside to outside. So the sphere of the universe has two linear and rotational motions. Given that the universe has reached certain homogeneity and equilibrium, all its points are interconnected by their particular gravitational force. Consequently, while the world is rotating, all its points are rotating all together. But at the same time, considering that it expands from within, each point of that has a linear motion plus a rotational motion. And 
and therefore we have two velocities whose total velocity is equal to v plus v prime. All linear velocity is the effect of the dark energy or residual energy, but let's see how our tangential velocity is. V prime is equal to r cross omega. It should be noted that since there is no external force in the rotation of the universe, the angular velocity is always constant. Thus, we conclude that our tangential velocity depends on the variable r. The more r, the more our tangential velocity. Accordingly, the variable parameter of the tangential velocity is the radius of rotation from the center of the universe or from where the Big Bang begins. After all, as the saying goes, as dark energy expands the radius of the universe, the radius of rotation and the universe's r is always increasing, and consequently our tangential velocity is always increasing. It should be considered that dark energy increases r and secondarily increases the tangential velocity. We have to see the Big Bang as a huge explosion that has given a primary energy to everything and it expands the universe, and its effect has given a uniform velocity to everything which moving away from the center of the universe and from the beginning of the Big Bang. But when the telescopes observe a corner of the sky and find points, they certainly have increasing velocity. And it is always V2 is more than V1 and V3 is more than V2 that will increase over time. Which it is due to the dark energy that changes R and increases the tangential velocity thereby increasing the total velocity of each object in the sky. We must remember that the dark energy and initial energy have been contiguous, have always been and always will be. Dark energy is actually the reduced initial energy that is continuous. Dark Matter Our highly dynamic world is always looking for its relative balance. The world revolves around itself and if we assume the current radius of the universe to be 10 to the power of 24 kilometers, And, in calculating its velocity, if we use the rule of displacement over the time of a period and assume that one-tenth of the lifetime as a period of rotation, we will reach very, very high velocities. That this wall is rotating with such a very, very high velocity, and as a result of this velocity and rotation, a spiral centripetal force is created. And all parts of this world are affected by it, which is the beginning of the creation of black holes and galaxies. This spiral centripetal force, which brings objects closer together in the universe, is called vivid force or dark matter. Note that the definition of a dark matter that passes through everything and is everywhere is actually a definition of a force. The vivid force or dark matter.